two, three, maybe a... Hey, Katie. What's going on? Oh, hey, Dr. Kamka. Just taking a look at my patient's EKG, trying to understand what's going on in each of these leads. Why do we even have 12 leads? You know, that's a great question. So we're looking at a three-dimensional structure in 2D. And so the EKG represents a single snapshot of the heart's electrical rhythm from 12 different angles. Oh, so it's like a chest x-ray when we look at the lateral and the frontal plane. If we look at one view, we might miss something. You got it, exactly right. And those 12 leads tell us different portions of the heart, the anterior, the posterior, and so forth. <laughs> and this actually leads us to our next discussion. So let's take a look at this diagram here. So we're taking a look at the heart from 12 different angles, right? And so we have two sets of leads. We have the precordial leads right here, which are the chest leads, the purple ones, that are looking at the heart from the horizontal axis. And then we have the green leads, which are looking at the heart from the frontal axis. And we can take this to take a look at certain portions of the heart. So we have two, three, and AVF that are looking at the inferior portion. We have V1 through V4 that's looking at the anterior portion of the heart. And then on this side of me, we have V5, V6, and one in AVL. They're looking at the lateral portion of the heart. Now let's take a look at how we can use the leads to tell us about the axis or the flow of electricity for the heart. So we hear a lot about axis. What is axis? It simply represents the average flow of electricity through the heart. Your normal heart leans down and to the left. So it makes sense that the average flow of electricity is also going to be down and to the left. And we can take a look at the EKG to kind of tell us which direction the flow of electricity is through the heart. Normal hearts are going to be somewhere between 0 degrees and minus 90. Right axis deviation is going to have the flow of the heart between 105 to positive 180 degrees. Left axis deviation is going to be minus 105 degrees to minus 180 degrees. But it can get a little bit complicated. So my friend Mark here has a very simple method that can help explain things. Yeah, so I really like to use the quadrant method. I've heard about that. I like it. Yeah, so the quadrant method, we mainly look at the QRS complex in two leads. Leads 1 and AVF. But what about all the other leads, Mark? Well, they're important too, but we like to keep it simple. Simple is always positive. So remember that lead 1 runs horizontally and to the patient's left. And lead AVF runs vertically and towards the patient's feet. So if we have a positive QRS complex in leads 1 and AVF, then we know our vector is somewhere in between those two leads, or normal axis. That's pretty good, Mark. Let me make it a little bit more challenging for you. So what if the lead is negative in lead 1 and positive in AVF? That would mean that our axis is somewhere in this quadrant. We would call that right axis deviation. That's pretty good. What about if it's positive in lead 1 and negative in AVF? Well, that would mean that our axis is somewhere in this quadrant, and we would call that left axis deviation. Exactly right. So now that we have a better understanding of how to determine axis, let's practice on a couple 12 lead EKGs. All right, now let's practice determining axis. Here we have a complete 12 lead EKG. Which leads do we want to look at when we determine axis? Remember that when we talk about axis, we're talking about the frontal plane. So we want to look at the limb leads. So let's take a closer look at those. All right, which two leads were we looking at when we were using the quadrant method to determine axis? We were looking at lead 1 and AVF. We can see in this EKG that lead 1 is positive, meaning we have a tall R wave predominance, and AVF is negative, meaning there's a predominant S wave. Positive in 1, negative in AVF means left axis deviation. Left axis deviation is commonly seen in conditions like left ventricular hypertrophy, which we can see in patients that have long-standing hypertension. Let's take a look at another EKG. Now that you've got the skills, let's take a look at another EKG. This one has a different axis deviation. So just like Mark taught us, we're going to focus in on those limb leads. So let's zoom in on 1 and AVF. So in 1, we have mostly a downward deflection, that predominant S wave. And then in AVF, 
we see that it's mostly upright with a tall R wave. This is a right axis deviation. We see this most commonly in someone with right ventricular hypertrophy, where the right ventricles become bigger because it's pushing against elevated pulmonary artery pressure. This is often uh, an EKG that you'll see in our pulmonary hypertension patients. You may have noticed that we've mentioned hypertrophy twice now as a cause of axis deviation. But in fact, there are multiple things that can affect our axis. Another important one is ischemia. The mean vector will deviate away from the infarct. Right. Hypertrophy, ischemia, and many other things can affect our axis. It's important to determine the axis on every EKG that you see. So remember, determine rate, rhythm, axis on every EKG every time.